What's crack, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. We are finally shaping up and looking like somewhat of a fucking studio because our beautiful red studios are in the studio. Studios for studio. It's Monday morning. It's Sunday morning by me. It's early as shit. It's 7 11 a.m. I'm a big morning guy though. Nothing gets me going. Getting up in the morning. No, I'm about to outwork your asses. Give me a big cup of coffee. Let's make a featured film. It's Q&A Monday, 13 A's. Don't get it twisted. If you want to submit a question to be featured on the next Q&A Monday, join our Big Dogs Discord and DM me on there. You could then DM me as many times as you want, any day of the week, any time at 7-11, at 7-12, at 7-12 p.m. I'm taking questions all hours of the day. Inside the Discord channel, you'll also be able to join Big Dogs Dynasty Startup Leagues. We got 95 of them mother suckers. By the time y'all watch this, honestly, it might be over the 100 mark. I will be joining the 100th Dynasty League, and I haven't decided how we'll be letting in the members, but it will likely be through y'all and we'll get into that via one of the questions on today's episode so if you enjoy all i ask is that you hit that thumbs up it lets youtube know that you like the big dogs videos very rude of me i forgot to introduce myself my name is nick this is bdge big dogs gotta eat fantasy football q a monday so tuck your shirts in tuck your sweatshirts into your sweatpants mm. stop yelling let's eat i'll see y'all on the other side of the intro So we're about four or five, I think, weeks into the Q&A Mondays. I think I've, I think this might be the fourth one. I'm curious as to what you guys think of the Q&A Mondays. You know, Tuesday, Thursdays, I do the individual video with a very specific topic. I like doing the Monday videos. I would like to know how you guys are liking them, though. Like, what questions would you like to see more of? Do you like me answering more fantasy questions on this? Do you like more personal questions? Do you like the redraft? Do you like the dynasty? Whatever it is you like, let me know down below, and I'll start catering these more towards that. I always try to hit you with the big facts, fantasy-wise, off the rip, so those y'all I clickbaited into coming stick around. But I'm having fun with it, so I hope y'all are. First question comes in from West Tron. What is the better consistency pick in the first round? A wide receiver, MT Adams or Hill, or a running back? I always think a wide receiver is the safe play and RB is more risk, but is it really? Great question. I love I love challenging the status quo in fantasy because we've got this little fucking bubble on Twitter that pretty much runs the industry. And if you're not following me on Twitter, my handle is Nick underscore BDGE. So go follow me. It's literally the best thing you could do as a fantasy football player. You, you get fantastic fucking analysis on there. Not just from me, but from everybody on there. The problem with it is, though, it's all these dudes who have influence on there and they've built their entire following through Twitter. And then they all just start echoing the same shit. It's one giant gangbang echo chamber so as soon as someone with some sort of credibility says something everyone just starts picking it up and this is one of the things that i feel like had come to the forefront for a lot of years consistently it was that these first round wide receivers are the safe ones and running backs are way more boom or bust it is a loaded question a lot of bullets in the chamber so i wanted to break it down for y'all and take a look back at last year a lot of numbers on here this is what i did it's the top seven finishers at both positions running backs on top wide receivers on the bottom from last year and using the consistency charts within our big dogs draft guide which you can get by going to monkeyknifefight.com depositing 10 bucks and using promo code bdge you'll get the draft guide for free we looked at our consistency charts we have five different categories within the consistency charts the first of which is busty zero to seven points half ppr it goes to extra medium it goes to cooking booming ftp cooking is 12 to 17 boom in a 17 to 24 fade faded the public is 24 plus so i wanted to look at the low end games for both running backs and wide receivers that finished within the top seven i just picked top seven because i, I figured those are guys who are like viable first round running backs or wide receivers so i wanted to look at their floor i wanted to look at like their median games and then i wanted to look at their league winning type games if you look in the busty category you could see that the percentages are actually far far lower for running backs now this is going to differ a little bit if you go to full ppr all of the leagues that i play in i currently am in like five redraft leagues and you know a bunch of dynasty leagues those are all half ppr i believe all of the big dogs dynasty startups we have done are also half ppr that is the way i tend to look at my analysis just going forward and to preface for you guys that are new to the channel and whatnot which obviously lends an advantage to the running backs but in terms of bust rate it was much much higher for wide receivers 
And I would say, okay, you know what? I could sacrifice some bus games if that low bus risk for running backs came at the expense of higher upside. But if you look on the flip side, right, you have the averages on the bottom of both charts. So on average, the running backs in the top seven busted at 9%, almost double for wide receivers at 17%. You look at the median games, anything from cooking, booming, or the fade the public category. So that's basically 12 points or more. 75% of the games for the top running backs, 62 for the top wide receivers, and then faded the public. So you're not even sacrificing the bottom end games to ensure that you have weak winning performances from the wide receivers. The top seven RBs had fade the public games in 30% of their games and wide receivers only 14% of the games. If you look at like the top wide receiver, like Michael Thomas had a historic year for a fantasy wide receiver last year. He busted at about the same exact rate as Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Zeke, Cook, and Eckler. 6% for Michael Thomas. Five of those top seven running backs were around the exact same rate. And then you look on the flip side of that chart where you're thinking, okay, Michael Thomas was a league winner. Yes, but he also had fewer week winning games than C-Mac, Aaron Jones, Henry, and Cook. And it only gets worse from there once you drop off of Michael Thomas. So I know this is a one-year sample size, but I'm relatively confident that this is what you'll see almost year in and year out, especially in half PPR leagues if that is what you play in. So to say that wide receivers are safer, the reason I put that end category onto the chart as well is because, okay, one of the nuances to this conversation is, are they safer because we know which ones are going to be good, right? It's like, okay, maybe their floor is a little lower, their ceiling is a little bit lower, but it's easier to get the ones that are good as opposed to running backs where it's tough to choose. So I wanted to look at their ADPs. Like, was it really harder to choose the top running backs or the top wide receivers? And they're pretty much in the same category. Out of the top seven running backs, three of them were first round picks last year. Out of the top wide receivers, two of them are first round picks. Running backs, they had a second rounder. Wide receiver, they had a second rounder. Running backs, they had a third rounder. Wide receiver, they had a third rounder. They both had a fourth rounder. They both had a fifth rounder. And then Devontae Parker is the obvious outlier there. So going based on these numbers, it was actually harder to predict based on average ADP who the top wide receivers even were because they were going lower in the draft. And again, this might be an outlier of a year. So the simple question or the simple answer based off last year's numbers in in terms of both floor, in terms of consistency, in terms of upside, is that running backs were pretty much everything in fantasy last year. I do think the better question, though, might just be the value of these overall fantasy positions, right? It's nice to get consistency in the first round or two rounds, but you should not be sacrificing upside or positional advantage in doing so. And this is a fantastic chart slash tweet from this dude, Jared Smola at Smola DS. Uh, he's an analyst for Draft Sharks. Uh, he's a good follow on Twitter, very analytical. So I would I would go uh, I would go hop on that if you are on Twitter. And this is for PPR. So this is even more tangible for those of you that play in PPR leagues. Uh, projected PPR points for the top 25 quarterbacks, 50 running backs, 70 wide receivers, and 25 tight ends. Biggest takeaway, running back and tight end drops off much more steeply than quarterback and wide receiver. And this is the reason why running backs go so early, because if you miss out on the top guys, by the time you get to the third round, the fall off is just so dramatically big the green line there is the top running backs you could see the guys who are projected for the most and then as soon as you get down a little bit it drops off dramatically whereas wide receivers over there the fall off this is basically value over positional replacement the flatter the line the more horizontal the line is as you can see for the wide receivers the yellow the less drop off there is from you know wide receiver eight to wide receiver 18 whereas running back you know if you miss running back three to running back nine is a massive drop off and that's why we'll be talking all summer running backs, running backs, running backs, running backs, because those need to be primarily the picks that you're making in the early rounds of draft. Because if you don't get really studly running backs to anchor your team, and there there was an awesome tweet. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it by the time I edit this video, because I forget where it even was. But it was someone talking about how the reason running backs are so valuable and quarterbacks are so valuable in super flex is because of the positional scarcity. So even if you don't like, you know, even if there's a better wide receiver available in fantasy over a running back like this wide receiver is better than this running back there's a case to be made that the running back is still the right selection because of positional scarcity because on an average field you're starting one quarterback the nfl teams you're starting probably 1.25 running backs you're starting 2.5 wide receivers and probably 1.25 tight ends and he goes into the analytics and the numbers just trust that i'm i'm feeding you the big facts correctly it's just running backs running backs running backs running backs so Based on what I'm talking about, running backs seem to be more consistent, less busty, higher upside, 
and just better positional value. Makes very, very little sense to start grabbing wide receivers early in the first round. Outside of, you know, like I, I could understand in Michael Thomas in the, in the back half of the first round, in the later part of the first round of Devontae Adams this year maybe, but I wouldn't start getting cute and taking like Julio Jones over Josh Jacobs or Miles Sanders or anything like that. I would go with the running back even if you're a little bit nervous about him being less safe because at the end of the day, the positional drop-off from those top wide receivers to the guys you're going to get a round or two later are not that steep but if that running back hits you know that, that's the thing if the wide receiver hits if julio hits and is does his normal wide receiver four or five it's not winning you the league if miles sanders hits and becomes like the rb3 he's likely winning you your league or at least close to it that's the way i think you should start looking at it so question number one good one from westron riley o monday q a for keeper leagues how do you go about choosing veterans that can produce now and rookies with high upside like ceh and taylor how do you try to catalyze your leagues to make more trades if it's usually pretty dead question three also more of a general question what helps bdge more purchasing a draft guide through your site or mkf so we'll start with the first question for keeper leagues how do you go about choosing between veterans that can produce now and rookies with high upside like ceh and taylor there's so much nuance to keeper leagues i think my first question would be like how long do you keep these guys for that would be like the biggest question mark so for the keeper leagues i've played in we usually keep a guy for one year and then throw him back into the pool if you keep him for like two or three years i feel like you might as well just start a dynasty league also depends on like how many players are are being kept like if if all the top running backs you know saquons and zeke's and kamara and c-max are already being kept then do you really have another choice but to pick these guys uh what is your team already made up of what holes are you trying to fill on your team i think it also comes down to personal shit like what's the cost of the buy-in how many years are you willing to pay while kind of building up your team as opposed to trying to compete for a championship every single year because i'm in dynasty like dynasty leagues are funny man because everyone goes into the league with a different strategy some dudes who got deep pockets might just throw the entire first year but have a stacked 2021 team or know that they're playing for 2022 so they'll throw the startup draft but they'll get everybody's first round picks and that's going to be fun in two or three years but that's not me i like to compete every single year you're also giving up the buy-in like if you're just a kid in college obviously you're not trying to throw away you know a hundred dollar buy-in for two straight years so it's going to be extremely subjective to to your situation i think it's also really important to understand when your winning window is going to happen because for instance all else equal if you know you're not going to compete this year then what makes clyde edwards hilaire more valuable than jk dobbins it probably doesn't because yes clyde edwards hilaire will outscore jk dobbins in a redraft this year for one year but who's to say that mark ingram's not gone next year and jk dobbins doesn't take over probably what's going to be the most valuable fantasy position in all of fantasy and that is the starting running back if they have a workhorse if they let him be the workhorse the starting workhorse in baltimore so it's it's understanding like when your win winning window is and matching that up with the players that you're drafting again though i'm not sure how long you're keeping these players for i don't know how your team is built right now i don't know like what picks you have i don't know how uh, what other guys are, are keeping in this situation i will say though i'll, I'll probably side with more youth because you could usually always trade for veterans later into the season. But if someone picks Jonathan Taylor, they're picking it for the future. So you're not going to be able to trade for Jonathan Taylor for anything less than your cock. So the Jonathan Taylor cock trade is not a good way to go about doing these kind of things. I think that they'll probably have similar value in your draft. But over the long term, you'd rather have a guy that's younger, that's going to have another four years on the rookie contract, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, that's always going to be subjective to the team that you have. I hope any of that was valuable. I feel like I just spewed for about 17 minutes about absolutely nothing. Second question from Riley. How do you try to catalyze your leagues to make more trades if it's usually pretty dead? Uh, I mean, you can't force people to make trades. What I would do is try to figure out the most engaging times of the year subjective to your league and work around that i also think like the reason a lot of trades don't happen is because everyone's trying to fucking trade rate people like everyone's trying to dominate their trade whereas if you go into a trade understanding that both sides have a need maybe one side's a little stacked at tight end one side's a little more stacked at wide receiver and you can make something that's fair between the two sides you have a lot better chance to make that happen so if you have like rookie drafts those are always exciting times to get trades going i also think right before your trade deadline is just such a good and especially in the way you've contextualized your league for keeper leagues right deciding between vets and youth if you are a win now team if you know you're going to make the playoffs and you have a guy who's not going to make the playoffs and you want to trade for like a julio jones whose value is going to be a little bit plummeted in a keeper league because what does he have two years left maybe maximum you could trade some of your youth then for the veteran and both sides win right like that is the perfect situation where no one's actually losing the trade very very different pieces going back and forth but they're the perfect pieces for those two separate teams 
So first thing I would do is when the league is most active, that's when you should get into trade talks. Like if your league is just dead all off season, you could try to stir something up. Or if there's like big player news that drops, maybe start a conversation with one or two people in your league. Be like, yo, did you hear about this? Drop a few hints about some guys you like on their team and then you can get into conversation. But if there's nothing going on and then you just shoot straight into fucking trade talks, it's probably gonna stop at a dead end. So wait till everybody's the most engaged. They're ready for football. They're excited about it. Maybe training camp is starting up or whatever. Then look to start making trades. But start off with conversation and make sure that you're not just a fucking asshole. Make sure you're going into the trade talks thinking like, okay, both sides are going to win the trade. That is how you get trades to happen. I also think just from a league standpoint, the more roster spots you have, the more starting roster spots you have, the more trades will happen. If you do super flex, if you do two quarterback leagues, if you do tight end premium, if you open up two extra flex spots, that means there's always going to be more needs from the teams, right? Because they don't have enough players to fill all those good spots. So they're always going to be looking for trades. Quarterbacks become very, very trade happy in super flex leagues as opposed to if it's a one quarterback league no one cares about trading for quarterbacks that opens up an entire new position to trade for so i I would say if you're looking to start a league that's going to be trade heavy from the beginning open up a league with a lot of roster spots and make sure all of the positions are valuable if you play in like one quarterback leagues basically quarterbacks don't really matter tight ends barely matter because there's only like three of them and no one's going to trade them so you're really only giving yourself two chances to trade start your whole fucking league over is basically what i'm saying Also more of a general question. What helps BDGE more? Purchasing a draft guide through your site or MKF? Okay, so I'm gonna break this down for y'all from a business angle and and let you know how this entire deal works. First things first, signing up for the draft guide through Monkey Knife Fight is the most helpful to our business. And here's why. Similar to how I talked about The trades need to be good for all sides. They need to be equal. Everyone needs to be getting a good portion of the deal. This is the deal I have with Monkey Knife Fight. So there's three parts of the equation here. There's me, there's them, and then there's you guys. Everybody is winning in this situation. Through Monkey Knife Fight, if you go to Monkey Knife Fight and you deposit $10 using my promo code, BDGE, you will get $10 to play on Monkey Knife Fight. They match that 10 bucks, so you'll actually be getting $20. If any of y'all are like golf fans or UFC fans, they actually have, they started running sports games again, so you could start using the money that you deposit finally. But we're, we're gonna run through that during the NFL season and give you our favorite picks throughout. You guys are paying 10 bucks, getting $20 to play with on their site, plus both of our draft guides, which we typically sell for $30 season long, $50 for the package of both the season long and the rookie dynasty. So y'all are only paying $10 as opposed to normally paying 50, 60, $70 for what you're actually getting. So you guys get a good deal. It's not, I don't feel spammy pushing this on you guys because you're actually getting great value from the deal. Number two is me. For everyone that uses my code, they kick me back more money than I would have made had you guys just signed up for bigdogsdraftguide.com. So y'all are winning. I'm winning. So you might say, okay, why would they do that? Are they losing? No, because these sites calculate the lifetime value of a player. And clearly they've calculated that whatever they're giving me, they're going to make on average more from you guys over the lifetime of your user name on their website. So they're getting new users, which is extremely difficult in a saturated market like the fantasy football industry, where there's new startups and new sites and new apps popping up all the time to get a share of that user market is tough. So they need to come to people like me who have the audience like you guys who love playing on these sites. So it's a win, win, win. We all get something good. Y'all get the draft guide for an extremely low price. I get a really solid money kickback each time you guys use it and sign up for it. They get a new user who, again, they've obviously calculated the lifetime value is good for them. So all parties win. That is typically the base base makeup of any affiliate deal within our industry. So y'all signing up on Monkey Knife Fight is the best thing for our business. That is how we make the most profit off of our draft guide. In the draft guide, if y'all are like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? I believe it's two weeks, two weeks and two days from today, the season long guide drops, which will have all of my top sleepers, the top busts, the must draft players, our season long rankings, but you'll also get the dynasty rankings. You'll get the rookie rankings, PPR, half PPR standard. There's like a thousand different exclusive articles and videos in there that y'all will not be getting on YouTube. And then you've got the Bible. The Bible is this monster fucking strategy write-up I do every single year. Looking at the trends. I mean, I I analyze fantasy for the last like four months. I see all the trends throughout the summer. I will be doing it for the next two months. And I write this big ass article, position by position, exactly how to attack your fantasy football draft this year. The entire thing is online. So you can get it from your phone, your tablet, your computer, and it is updated throughout the entire summer. We're always updating and adding new things to it. It's dope. It is 
without a doubt, the best value that you could find in fantasy to help you prepare for the year. So head over to monkeyknifefight.com. Use the promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks, you will get the guide for free plus $20 to play with on their site. If you're in a state that's not eligible, unfortunately, it's not eligible for everybody. I believe international people can do it. And there's like a maybe a list of like 10 or 12 states that can't do it. Uh, then you're going to have to just cop the guide from bigdogsdraftguide.com. But I love and support all of y'all either way. Anything from buying the guide through Monkey Knife Fight to the thumbs up button. Y'all click down below in the video if you're enjoying it. Nothing but love for everybody. Bad man Bane. Long time fan here. What up, Bane? When working on your content schedule, how far out do you plan? Are you a month to month guy, a week to week guy, a fuck it, let's do this guy? <laughs> it, it's funny. I guess it depends on what type of content we're doing. I, I would say for the most part, I'm the latter. I'm definitely like a fuck it, let's do this. For instance, you guys are watching this on Monday, which means Snacks and Animal are on their way to my apart to the headquarters right now. And we're filming Fade the Public tonight, probably, or no, tomorrow in like 24 hours. And I don't think we have any idea what we're actually doing for the episode. So I, I think that Dick, I think the content schedule is usually dictated by the people who are doing the content. Like, how do you work? Are you better improvisation? Are you better having notes and having all this stuff ready up front? Is that how you'd like to do your content? For instance, I'm, I make lists fucking all day, right? I make to-do lists, I make lists for this, lists for that. And I have multiple calendars like all over the place of my content schedule that I pretend like I'm gonna do. And every summer I do this. I make it for June, I make it for July, I make it for August. And every summer I never, <laughs> I never ever ever stick to it. It gives me like a rough baseline of the blog posts that I should be doing. So I'll have maybe like 20 categories of videos that I wanna do. And throughout the summer, a couple days ago, I'll just, I started writing pieces of like four or five different blog posts. So it's kind of a mashup of whenever those are ready, whenever I feel like they're ready to start doing. It's also a mashup up of seeing what's working well in the YouTube space at the time in that summer. Do I switch things up? Sometimes I just get fucking lazy and I'm like, okay, I don't feel like preparing for a video like this. So I'm just going to do a mock draft where everything is kind of off the rip. Sometimes like the video last week or two weeks ago with Dr. Morse, we filmed a week before we actually put it out. And I was supposed to have a different video for that Tuesday. Like I'd be lying to y'all all the time. I'd be like, yeah, next, next video is the wide receiver rankings video. And then all of a sudden it's like Dr. Morse pops up that day. I sometimes I'm just like, ah, I don't feel like filming today. So I'm going to put out a video. I already kind of fucking have cute up and ready to go and that's really how i operate i'm much 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 less calculated than than probably most people are i like to kind of go with the flow which is just my personality and how i do my videos so good question chroma hey man do you ever do listener leagues for just full single year drafts so i get this question like 80 four thousand times a, a summer and as of right now i'm very very conscious about where i put my energy in for leagues so i'm in i believe i believe three dynasty leagues and then i do a few i've been really good every summer everyone's like oh, i'm gonna cut down on my fucking leagues i'm gonna cut down i'm in too many right and i've actually done a good job of doing that because the problem is with the in-season content schedule when we're putting out five videos a week in season those are to so time sensitive as opposed to where i was just explaining during the summer i have a lot of flexibility with my creativeness on when I want to do blog posts. I could start writing five of them and it doesn't matter when I finish them because I could put them out at any time. Whereas in season, like I know damn well, Monday morning, my ass needs to wake up and get on that waiver wire shit. So what happens is I'm so focused and so time consumed with creating content during the in season. So like when Tuesday night rolls around, and I need to have my, my waivers ready for Wednesday morning. It'll be like 1am and I'm like, fuck, I didn't do my waivers yet. And then I got to run through 10 leagues. I'm just like, dude, like I like fantasy football, but I'm not about to ruin my fucking 16 straight weeks of my life each year because I forgot to, because I joined too many leagues and I don't want to set the thing. So that is like a real life decision people need to make. I know people don't take that shit seriously, but, but I do because I have too much shit going on in the season to worry about that. I don't want to join leagues with you guys and half-ass it. Like I know that a lot of you guys want to be in leagues with myself and my team and stuff. I'm just like, okay, if that's the case, like I want to make sure I'm giving you hundred percent of my energy. So right now the leagues that I'm in, we have the NYC draft weekend league. One of my favorite leagues that I'm in for sure. The dudes come out from all over the country that were just subscribers for me and we kick it for the weekend and have that league open up. I don't believe we're going to have any spots open this year. Maybe one spot. I'm not really sure. I don't even know if we're going to be able to do it because it's the end of, end of August. We'll see how the traveling and, and that shit is going, but most likely not going to happen. So we'll probably have a redraft league offline. Otherwise, I do the E-Town get down with the homies from, from high school and maybe one or two other leagues. But for redraft, again, I'm sorry, guys. As we grow, like y'all get to know the team better. You guys get to know Animal and Snacks and Noah and Mike and Scott and 
and those guys and they've been opening up different leagues like mike and noah just opened up a dynasty league for people that listen to bunk bed breakdowns i'm sure uh animal snacks might open a league for a fade the public listener leagues maybe i'll jump into one or two of those but i'm i'm, I'm commission of like five i'm commission of basically every league i'm in that's co- time consuming on top of doing the content and on top of making sure my team is okay and things like that so uh unfortunately i would love to do more with y'all but i don't want that to come at the expense of you know, not actually being good within the league with you guys and not good like standings wise. I don't give a shit if you kick my ass, but good as in like engaging with you guys. So I, I hope that makes sense. And, I'm, and I apologize. And if I do open up a league to the subs, it will be I will announce it on YouTube. I'll probably make a, a whole separate video for it saying like subscriber league open. I'll put it on Twitter and Instagram. So make sure you're following me everywhere. So y'all will know if I do end up doing that. I'll kind of wrap up with his last question. K Venz 19. Now that you guys live together, is there any weird hangups or habits you discovered the others do? Okay. So as I was saying, animal snacks are on their way here. We don't, no one, li- I live in this apartment by myself right now. And by right now, I mean, I just live in this apartment by myself. I don't know. That's not going to change in, in six months. So we do not live together. This apartment I got as a recording studio. Also where I live, my mattress, I have a bed downstairs in this shitty little fucking room. Really? This is just a physical office. I can't tell the government that i don't think or the people that rent this out to me but at the end of the day this is just a place where we can all kind of work together and come and and you know create together so it's it's what normal people would call an office we do not live together the plan was to have you know animal snacks come here weekly for the fade the public noah to come stay here for the summer to help me you know run things at big dogs the two interns one of them was supposed to live here but shit just got this, this summer just got obviously extremely hectic between the protests being like on my block having curfews and, and covid just fucked a lot of shit up so unfortunately that kind of put a lot of wrench into the plan plans because by the time we can kind of get this up and running it'll be like late june early july and that gives us like a month and a half of summer before people start working again and people start going back to school and whatnot that was the overall plan and will be going forward but for right now yeah it's just me i I don't live here with anybody else and i don't know you know i thought it was a great idea up front but now that i'm here by myself like i I really i'm a super independent person i really like being by myself and obviously i want other people in the office but like this is also if i need to concentrate trait or something or if i'm like you know you can congratulate me on the sex afterwards but if i go out with a girl or something we come back here like i don't want to have to kick these people out who have like never been to new york before not referencing snacks or animal and be like all right fend for yourself for the next few hours and by few hours i mean probably like four minutes but but y'all get the point so i'm kind of in a weird place in terms of what i actually want to do here but for the most part, COVID done fucked the summer up. I hope I didn't fuck up this Q&A Monday. Thank you all for joining me. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you want to support the brand, you do that by going to sign up at monkeyknifefight.com. Make sure you play a game on there. You got to play some games on there in order to qualify for the draft guide. You got to play a game of at least $2, but you got the you got the money on there for free. You're throwing the 10 bucks on there and then it's your money to play with. Why not just fucking throw it on a game? Why not win some money in this economy scare money don't make no money baby so i'll see y'all tomorrow's video i don't even know what it is yet see that's that's what i'm talking about i don't know what it is there's like four options i got to choose from it's like grab bag in this bitch i'll see you tomorrow one way or another you're getting my face hole again love y'all